So far, I've used just a few real domain names from the internet's namespace, chosen mostly for my own personal or sentimental reasons, like hp.com or infoblocks.com. Let's take a brief detour from theory and look more closely at the structure of the internet's namespace. Initially, the internet's namespace was simple. There were just seven top-level domains and they were organized functionally. Com, for example, was for commercial organizations, such as Hewlett Packard, which uses hp.com. Edu was for educational organizations, such as my alma mater, the University of California at Berkeley, which uses berkeley.edu. Gov was used by U.S. governmental organizations, such as NASA, which uses nasa.gov, and INT for international treaty organizations, such as NATO, which uses nato.int. MIL is still used by U.S. military organizations, such as the U.S. Air Force, which uses af.mil. NET was used by networking organizations, such as NSFNET, which used nsf.net. And ORG was used by non-commercial organizations, such as the Internet Systems Consortium, which uses isc.org. Many of these original charters have since been relaxed, however. COM, NET, and ORG were opened in 1996 to any would-be registrant, whether they were networking-related or not, non-commercial or not. These were the first of what we now call generic top-level domains, or GTLDs for short. There was also a transitional domain, ARPA, which was used when well-known hosts moved from the host table into DNS. You just tacked .arpa onto the end of the host name to create its new domain name. So for example, the host that was used to distribute the host table, SRI-NIC, became SRI-NIC.ARPA, and then eventually became NIC.DDN.MIL. SRI-NIC.ARPA remained as an alias for NIC.DDN.MIL for some time to make the host easier to find. As with so many transition mechanisms, however, ARPA lasted much longer than was originally intended. In fact, it's still in use today, albeit for different purposes, which we'll look at later. Some of you may note a certain nationalistic prejudice in some of these early top-level domains, such as Gov and Mill, which are still used almost exclusively by U.S. organizations. You may find it easier to forgive this if you remember that the ARPANET began as a U.S. Department of Defense project. Later, top-level domains were reserved for every country in the world, according to a standard list called ISO 3166. ISO 3166 lists two- and three-letter abbreviations for every country in the world. We refer to the domains created from this list as CCTLDs, Country Code Top-Level Domains. The first three, US, UK, and IL, for the United States, the United Kingdom, and Israel, were created back in 1985, and at this point, almost all the countries in the world have one registered. ISO 3166 has actually been updated a lot over the past several years. For example, after South Sudan separated from Sudan in 2011, it got a new two-letter country code, SS. While this seems like a really simple scheme, as with all human endeavors, it's more complicated in its implementation. Some obsolete CCTLDs are still in use, such as the Soviet Union's SU, and some countries don't use the two-letter abbreviation from the document, like Great Britain, which should use GB, but actually uses UK. ICANN later allowed the addition of more top-level domains. Initially, these were a rather motley collection of oddball domains like Aero, Biz, Co-op, not Coop, Info, Museum, Name, Pro, and Travel, later supplemented by Cat, Jobs, Moby, and Travel. Cat, somewhat surprisingly, does not host cat videos, but rather serves the Catalan community. The website of beautiful Gaudi Basilica La Sagrada Familia, for example, lives under CAT. Quite recently, ICANN opened up the market for top-level domains to all comers, all comers, that is, who had nearly $200,000 to apply. They now include everything from adult to church and from rocks to sucks, and even a top-level domain called Cricket. There are about 500 of these which are due to be added to the top level of the namespace. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.